I guess not, because... <laughs> Decided to clip it out again for the second day in a row. That's cool, right? That's, uh, those are just, those are just OBS things to do, I suppose. Alright, sorry about that, everybody. Um, just mentioned I, I, when I was silent, I was turning the, the game volume down, because this game is an 1980s arcade game, and therefore it was designed to overwhelm absolutely everything from an audio standpoint. But, as is, I am Rock 617 tonight here with you for night three of the Halloween 2021 marathon. This is actually somewhat of a sentimental game for me for this event because last year's Halloween Horror Marathon in 2020 was the first time I ever ran this game in a marathon after having learned it earlier that month. And it's since become something of a staple of mine. For those who don't know, this game actually is a Castlevania-based game. It is and it's part of the lore. We actually are playing a summon Belmont here. It's incredibly unfair, but certainly beatable. I feel like that's just, I guess, maybe a running theme of the kind of games we're seeing tonight. This game might as well be a Ghouls and Ghosts title, I suppose. Not really, but anyway. Uh, I'll do my best to explain as it goes, but there are going to be some moments where I'm going to be doing my best to keep quiet because this game is this game. Is this game. Let's go ahead and pop our credit in. Go at three, two, one, go. Well, there we go. So you missed our opening cutscene there. I'm used to just firing up right away. In this lore, Simon actually gets married. And as soon as the wedding is over, Dracula shows up and is like, that's mine. Takes your bride, and we're off for adventure. As I mentioned, this is basically a ghouls and ghosts game. It just happens to have Castlevania characters. As you can tell, per Castlevania, we are starting off with a whip. Whip's decent. It, um, it gives us the range we need, but this is also one of the few Castlevania games that actually has melee upgrades. Which is honestly pretty neat. I think past this, Super Castlevania 4 was the first game to do that. Got a quick wall to grind past here. A couple things to note about this game. There are three different versions of it. There is the P version, which was localized in Japan. That is the easiest version. There is the M version, which was localized in the United States, and that is by far the hardest version. And this is K, which I believe was originally localized in Europe. And later was the second version released in the United States. This one's middle of the road in terms of like the overall difficulty compared to the other two. It's the one I've played the most, and it's the one I'm the most comfortable with, for sure. I have cleared M, but that game is anything but marathon ready ever, so not this time. Maybe another time. Anyway, got our first sub weapon. We're gonna have some bombs. Bombs are functionally similar to Holy Water from Castlevania 1, and that you only lob them to the ground and they remain there and can lock enemies in place. <clears throat> Unlike CV1 Holy Water, their bombs are not actually that useful, except specifically for the stage one boss. Gonna hold our ground here, kill some bats. Let Medusa walk there. Miss one hit, but that's okay. And it's unlock into oblivion. That'll be stage one. Had we taken any damage in that stage, we would be losing hearts in order to be able to compensate for the life loss. But we did, so we're good. This is one of four stages we're gonna start off by walking to the left. I don't know why they chose more than 50% of the stages to be left, but here we are. Another quick hot jam here. And duck here, take all this. So, a couple things to note. Our second sub-weapon, the boomerang, is not a weapon that we're going to be using, like, at all. At least not intentionally. But we are still going to pick it up because whenever you pick up a new sub-weapon in this game, you get five hearts, which is a, honestly a pretty big deal. We want hearts in this game. Because we're going to be getting a lot of sub-weapon abuse. We also have our first melee upgrade in the Morningstar. I believe it has the same range as the whip, but it is, definitely does more damage, so we're happy to have it. Quick underground cavern section here with some platforming. I'm actually gonna try and play this a little safe, but this segment can be kind of can be kind of rude for someone who's trying to pay pati play patiently because you can actually get more enemy spawns. So I'm gonna do my best to try to route this out. Don't. Okay, <laughs> that scared the hell out of me. So I guess it's appropriate. You have very stiff jumps in this game. They're very committed once you've left the ground, except for until you reach Apex, you can actually hold left or right to direction them a little bit, but it's still scary. So now we have the actual bread and butter of the game. We have the stopwatch. 
Stop watch only costs two hearts to use. One of the few reasons why it's so incredibly busted. So two uses of it there. As soon as you grab it, you use it inside the bat cave to prevent a bunch of bats from spawning. And then right after that, we kill that bone dragon by using it there. Gotta call a quick audible there. That guy normally doesn't spawn that quickly, but I guess we had a unfortunate pic uh, pixel trigger. Go ahead and plop down here. I would love to be able to jump there, but I don't want to damage boost off the bat. Health is incredibly precious in this game. Because unlike any other Castlevania game, there's no wall meat in this game. You only heal between stages, and hearts are quite a bit more important for something else. Drop that. Love the background scenery in this game, too. Look at that red sky. As it, I say, as it fades to black. <laughs> hey, no random skeleton. Nice. All right, speaking of bone dragons, here's our second boss. We're going to let him wander in. Show him the power of stopwatch. And yeah, that's just how busted that, that weapon is. Another cool thing about sub-weapons in this game, when you activate a sub-weapon, it also launches a melee attack at the same time, so you always get a two-for-one. And that's really helpful for fights like that, where you can just fire it up and hit the dragon on the same frame. On to stage three, introducing us to probably my least favorite enemy in the Fleeman in this game, with the music track that some of y'all might recognize. That damage boost there is... I, I think that damage boost is essential. No matter how you're playing this game, just always take it. There's no reason not to. i do a jump here. Didn't want to take that hit, but I think we'll be okay. Okay. So what we did there is actually a pretty major glitch. What we did was we warped into that door. That's not good. I thought there was a chance I missed time that. Hang on, I might need to... Uh, I might need to audible here. Okay. Um... So moving on. That guy was not supposed to appear if I had timed that properly. We'll be okay. We won't actually lose any, like, real health over it, so we should be fine. Another quick stopwatch there. Jump there. So anyway, we warped into that door with the stopwatch active, which means there were a bunch of harpies that would normally attack us that just don't spawn. Really useful thing to have happen. Another quick stopwatch there to avoid the eyeball. Okay, so down here, I am going to actually have to take another hit, which I'm not too terribly happy about in order to be able to get my next melee upgrade. Yeah, I didn't want that to happen that quickly. Okay. All right, so we got the sword. We do not want to have her move forward until that boomerang is gone, though. Boomerang will actually kill the room. We need to be able to make sure we have the stopwatch. Third boss here is the stained glass warrior, which I still love as a concept for a boss, but... We don't get to actually see him do anything because he just gets wiped out by stopwatch. Right, sorry I had to go quiet there after that uh, that door got messed up. That was kind of scary. All right, on to stage four. Known as the Den of Worship. Also the title track for this song. Big fan of this one. Check this coffin here. This stage, I think, is one of the longest in the game, if not the longest. We're actually also not going to get a whole lot of stopwatch abuse out of it. The stage is primarily going to be used for heart collecting. Like, we need a lot of hearts to be able to make sure we're going to be okay here. Just be able to make sure we have them into the next stage, primarily. So these guys spawn, take care of them. You also see we now have our final melee upgrade, which is the Claymore. Claymore, very, very powerful. Easily our best melee weapon. Did not want that to happen, but we can fix it. Did not want that to happen either. Okay. We got things happening that I'm not used to. Must be a marathon. Alright, we're gonna let these rise to the top. Quick platforming action here. Drop an elbow there in the Fleeman. Here we're just gonna be working our way through enemies, trying to make sure we can collect as many hearts as we can. This Raven we can actually manipulate to fly towards us like so. Missed it the first time, but got it the second time. I only really kill that Fleeman because he drops a fiver. Very important here. Okay, so 22 hearts is a little bit less than I anticipate normally having here, but we should be okay. Hopefully that guy will drop a boomerang up there. Okay, good. Means it wasn't in our way. Drop that guy. Trying to think of other things I could say about this game in regards to, like, what's so Castlevania about it. Obviously the bats. Bats are 
very much an emphasis in this game, and for additional loops, they actually alter their patterns, which is pretty silly, but haven't quite learned loop two yet. All right, on to by far the worst boss in this game. For those of you that have seen the movie Dogma, I refer to him as the Golgothan for many reasons. This dude's, uh, he's pretty crappy. Just gotta throw another fist at us. So what we're, we have to wait for is we have to wait for him to get close to that pillar so we can then go in and basically stop time and try to cleave him to death. But he kind of dictates the rules there. I don't even know if I got him. Nah, not close enough. It happens. And we got a hit for our trouble. It's cool. He's a troll. I'm not surprised. Okay, so this might work. Okay. So, a couple of things to note about that. Sub-weapon use is done exactly the same as it is in NES Castlevania. As you hold up and press attack. What you can do there is while you're jumping, you can hold up to buffer the sub-weapon the entire time. That way, the next stopwatch use will activate as soon as the previous one finishes. Very, very useful for being able to chain all that together. Do a quick elevator ascend here. Go center, right, center, right, center, and take the last hit. You can do that damage list, but it's quite difficult. I haven't quite learned it yet. Make another stopwatch use there. If I didn't use stopwatch there, we'd be seeing a suit of armor here on the ground along with a raven on every single one of these platforms. Whereas we only had this one, and he drops a five heart that I unfortunately missed. Thought I had that space correctly. Oh well. Care of a flame in here. Another stopwatch use to dodge this mummy. I'm actually going to take the hit going up the stairs. It's a reasonable speed strat. Go up this way. Another quick stopwatch abuse. The flaming skull is going to be coming back shortly, so I have to be mindful of that. And there's going to be another one, I think? I don't know if the timing's right for that one. Okay, so just barely got here in time. All right, we're chilling. Yeah, no skeleton on the top. There's supposed to be a skeleton up here that drops across. If he's not here, then the Fleeman's going to, and that's quite a bit more annoying because things like that can happen. Okay. So now we swap sub-weapons. That's rude. Take care of this guy real quick. Now we have our next important sub-weapon, the cross. Did not want to take that hit. Use it on Frankie here. I'm gonna actually go right back here to try to avoid getting hit. That's not good. Okay. That was actually scary. I've never had to space out quite that far, but uh, <laughs> with proper spacing, you can definitely just chuck crosses at him and he can't really fight you. I was a little closer than I should have been, but we got there. All right, on to our last stage. Here we have the bridge. We're going to be walking our way towards Dracula. This intensely awesome music. There's a couple of different strats you can utilize here. I go with the easier one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the first X number of bats, which I can't remember exactly how many it is, but X is essentially the number it's going to take for me to get to my second fiver piece. So that's our first fiver. Fiver meaning it just drops five hearts. Bridge is trying to catch up with this. And as long as I don't drop any execution here, I shouldn't have any issues being able to get across before I have to switch to taking alternating like damage boost essentially for the rest of the bridge. <laughs> I love the visuals in this stage too. That was scary. That guy actually got really close to me. Alright, probably I'm gonna pay attention here. Bridge still catching up. I can't remember if the next one's supposed to drop a five. I think it is. If it is, it's definitely the last one, but I might just damage boost off it for safety. Psych. <laughs> All right, that's our second one. Now I'm gonna take damage boost for most of the time. And of course we get this cool visual of the bridge literally collapsing at our feet. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. I never thought I could be so free. Believe it or not, I'm just me. <laughs> that last bat drops a torch, and while torch is a valid we Bible weapon against Dracula, I've never used it before, and that happened during a actual event once, and it was bad. It actually just completely killed the run, so I think I'm gonna have to resort to that. All right, so here's Dracula. First phase, we're hoping for one cycle. Sweet. Good to know. On to phase two. This is the same as usual, because Cross is super busted. Just gonna shuck him like crazy. And that's one loop of Haunted Castle. Get 
a cool little ending shot. Rescued our bride. Watched the castle sink into the river. And that's game. <laughs> oh, man. I was actually a little nervous after uh, all the shenanigans in stage three. But, yeah, good times. But an uh, interesting year for that game, and I still love it. Even though, like, believe me, I understand people are so so off about actually wanting to play this game and like i get it like i wouldn't have wanted to play it until i spent the time to actually learn it it is really really hard but once i learned how just absolutely disgusting stopwatch was it was it was a no-brainer i wanted to play it like for pretty much forever and i feel like i do runs of it at least once a month yeah thank you all so much for the ggs that's going to be our first of two konami arcade games this evening i'm going to go ahead and do a quick transition so we can get on to our second one